Well, we have a long way to go to get to a point that I'm uh, comfortable with. Uh, while I believe that uh, our health care system needs to be reformed, I am opposed to the uh, provider plan that's included in this uh, in the Democrat proposal. The idea of expanding government health care uh, to the degree that's being done here is something that I think will lend itself to uh, the demise of the health care system as we know it. it. will be very harmful to Kansans. Uh, and so I oppose this public uh, plan uh, as just one more step toward government making decisions that need to be left to, uh, to physicians and to their patients. Uh, and to their family members. So uh, while I believe that health care reform is an important topic, it's, it's something that I've uh, talked about, worked on for a long period of time, uh, I oppose the plan that's before us today. Uh, and, and part of it is, is in addition to the, to the concepts that are being suggested, it's the process. Uh, there are a number of us who have strong opinions and feelings. We represent different constituencies. Health care is a huge issue. It's a significant component, 17% of the gross domestic product uh, of, our, of our country's economy. Uh, and we need to make certain that all voices are heard. And once again, uh, the Congress is on a rapid pace uh, to try to pass so-called health care reform by the end of the month. Uh, this is too important to hurry through uh, for purposes of getting a headline that says House of Representatives passes health care reform. We need to do this right. I mean, Congress doesn't do its job very well when we're slow and methodical uh, and we know what kind of result we get, a pretty poor one whenever we're in a rush, particularly for just the political purposes of claiming uh, that health care reform has been accomplished. So um, in my opinion, we need to work hard to see that we come up with the right answers uh, and the direction that uh, we're headed today uh, certainly doesn't satisfy my criteria and I don't believe it's in the best interest of Kansans or Americans, uh, at least what's proposed today. Well, I, I, I have two criteria, two basic points that I would make and have made to the leadership, uh, both Republicans and Democrats who are debating this issue. I want them to know that uh, the places that I come from uh, were very rural. The entire state of Kansas is a, is a rural community and access to health care is a huge issue for us. It doesn't do us any good to reform the health care system and give people an insurance card uh, if they can't access the doctor, the nurse, the home health care, the pharmacy, uh, the, the nursing home. If those things don't exist, uh, that health care card doesn't mean much. So uh, a top priority for me is to make sure that rural aspects of health care reform aren't lost. I, I'm a chairman of the Rural Health Care Coalition, 151 members of the House, both Republicans and Democrats who've banded together to make certain that the rural nature of health care is not forgotten in this debate on health care reform. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with how we reimburse uh, health care providers. Uh, that determines in many instances whether or not they're going to be in our communities and whether they're going to be seeing uh, patients from across our state. My second criteria is to make certain that the doctor and the family, uh, the patient, are in charge of making decisions. Uh, one of the clear problems with this government plan that's being proposed is no doubt but what those decisions will ultimately be made by somebody in Washington, D.C., somebody at some department, some agency, determining whether or not you as a patient are entitled to, to have certain kind of health care, a certain procedure performed. And I think it's a, it's a foundation of the health care system that we have. It's one of the things that make our health care system so, it, it, so good is that it's the relationship between the health care provider, generally the doctor, and the patient. And uh, that's the other aspect that we need to make certain is preserved as we uh, debate this health care plan. Well, we need to make certain that we don't uh, do things that cause small business to go out of business. The fixed cost of being in business matters to most businesses across Kansas. In most communities in our state, we don't have growing populations that allow us to spread costs among more people, more customers. Uh, and so as the cost of being in business goes up, and that includes health care costs for our, their employees, uh, for their retirees. But one of the real problems with this plan as proposed today is a significant increase in taxes. Now, it's being described as just taxing the wealthiest uh, in our country, the highest incomes. 
But the reality is that many people organize their business as a sole proprietorship, a limited partnership, and they would be taxed at significantly higher rates. So small business under the plan that's now uh, being suggested by the, the Democrat leadership of the House uh, would be greatly damaged by this plan. And all of us, a small business, all, all citizens of this, this country need to worry about the cost of health care and the cost to us as taxpayers. It's one of the reasons that the, uh, the government plan that's being proposed is a real problem. Medicare today, uh, that government plan that we already have, which serves so many Kansans and serves them generally pretty well, uh, it's out of balance to the tune of $38 trillion over the next 75 years. The idea that we would expand that plan to cover more people when we know that this plan already has fiscal problems, it's out of balance, uh, that's just, uh, th th that lacks common sense. It makes no sense to try to expand a plan that we're not already sufficiently paying for to cover more people. So many things that we've heard about uh, the proposals, both in the House and the Senate, suggest that we're talking about uh, increasing the cost to taxpayers to the extent of at least a trillion dollars. Uh, and still, even though that might happen, leaving many people unsure, uninsured. Uh, and so a real difficult circumstance uh, uh, and an undesirable outcome. Uh, the last thing I think we would be supportive of is increasing taxes uh, more than, a, a, you know, the cost to the taxpayer more than a trillion dollars, a health care plan that costs that much money, and still not get to the point that uh, those who are uninsured today have insurance. So what I would suggest is that uh, Congress, unlike, you know, we just went through this with this uh, cap and trade piece of legislation in which uh, the, the rush was on to get it done. Uh, and in my opinion, we passed a terrible bill uh, in regard to, uh, to climate change. Uh, and so we ought to learn from that experience. We were passing legislation called cap and trade that I can't imagine there's a member of Congress who had read the entire bill. Uh, and in fact, there was an amendment offered at 3 o'clock in the morning, we're voting later that day, a 300-page amendment that I know no member of Congress has read. Uh, we need to take a pause in this health care debate. We can't afford not to do this right. Uh, and so let's slow the process down. Let's give every member of Congress, let's give the American people the chance to know what it is that's being discussed. And when the American people know what's going on here, they will have suggestions. Good, good judgment, good Kansas common sense could come into play. But we need to make sure that uh, we have the time to do that. In fact, uh, I was the first member of Congress. Now, I really think this is a, a bit of a silly idea. It ought not be necessary. But I was the first member of the House of Representatives to sign a pledge that I won't vote for a health care plan, a piece of legislation, until I've read it. Now, that'll just be the norm. That'll be the way things are. You ought not have to sign a pledge. But we want to highlight the importance of how difficult these issues are in regard to health care. Uh, we want to make certain that uh, we do it right and that we ought to take the time to make certain that we know what the language is and, more importantly than that, what the consequences of uh, that bill will be for people across our state and around the country. One of the things I think that we need to be paying attention to is we can do some common sense things that reduce the cost of health care. Uh, we're spending a lot of time talking about a government plan or mandating that uh, employers uh, provide uh, health care for their employees or that everybody in the country is required to buy insurance. Uh, before we get to those questions, it seems to me we ought to be focused on what can we do to at least slow, if not reduce, the underlying cost of health care. And I would say that uh, issues that we ought to be addressing is uh, just things that we know would make a difference. Uh, malpractice reform, tort reform, trying to make certain that the premiums that are paid uh, by hospitals, doctors, and other health care providers uh, for uh, insurance, uh, we know they increase the cost to the, to the patient. Even more important than the cost of the premium is the fact that uh, tests are ordered that are, are not really necessary. They're, they're being uh, required just for purposes of protecting a physician in case there's a lawsuit. All that adds, adds, adds up to significant increase in the cost of providing health care. Information technologies, our record keeping, our ability, we can improve the quality of health care by better records, but our ability to connect uh, our hospitals, our doctors, other health care providers around our state uh, with insurance companies, with uh, the pharmacist, 
uh, there is an opportunity that technology can provide efficiencies that reduce the cost of health care. Perhaps the biggest bang for the buck in reducing health care costs is wellness, fitness, diet, prevention. We need to make certain that physicians are reimbursed in a way that encourage them to have a conversation with their patient about what they can do to reduce their health care risk, to make sure that things, uh, tests, uh, laboratory uh, uh, tests are taken so that we can uh, detect disease and conditions early, thereby not only improving the quality of life of the patient, but also reducing the overall cost to the system. So how we live our lives, and I don't think it's a government program, but trying to make certain that we know about healthy living, about our diet, nutrition, obesity. Those are things that can really reduce the cost of health care for all of us. And so uh, as we talk about this overall reform of the health care system, uh, we ought to also pause to say, hey, there's a half a dozen things we could do just based upon common sense that would at least slow the ever escalating cost of health care and thereby reduce the cost of premiums and allow more people uh, to be covered by insurance. So a lot of proposals. My, my goal is to make certain those kind of common sense things are heard and that uh, places like Kansas are not forgotten as we uh, continue this health care debate. Trying to find a good result uh, that takes care of uh, all Kansans, all Americans. It's an issue that uh, really does deserve serious attention.